All righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a late night, out of date, live AEW Dynamite review. Woke up around fucking 10 o'clock, was up all night there. Woke up around 10 o'clock kind of deal. Just finished watching the shit. Gonna do the review live, folks, or else fucking it'll be like 1 a.m. by the time this shit is uploaded there. Just a long, boring shit show there. Like a fucking waste of two hours. You know what I mean? Peter Spence, up WJ, Money Matt, WJ there. Peter Spence, glad I didn't watch. You didn't miss fuck all. You miss nothing. Like, um, the first match was the Young Bucks versus Pac and Penta. And, um, you know, the Young Bucks, they come out with their goofy entrance, goofy dancing, the little guitar there from Cucamanda Ranch, California. At a combined weight of 50 pounds. The bum fucks. Like, just so fucking goofy. Like, and basically another kick and flip match or whatever. Couple of dangerous looking head bumps. You know what I mean? And Matt Jackson in this match, he does one of the fucking silliest things I've ever seen. You know, like. Nick Jackson has one of them. He's holding him on the outside. He's holding Pac there. And then he's like this, he, you know, for Nick Jackson to do the dive there. And he, he's fucking exaggerating there that he's going to do a dive. Then he just runs. <laughs> he goes out. He does a fucking goofy looking speed walking kind of thing. A clothesline line instead of doing the dive and like it's so fucking silly like even the announcers they fucking didn't know what to say about this they you know what i mean it's just ridiculous it's taking wrestling and making a mockery out of it it is what it is like this whole killing the business gimmick or whatever if you're actually killing the product Making a wrestling match look like a fucking goof circus act, comedy act, or whatever, then it's not a good thing. You know what I mean? If you're killing the credibility, it's bad enough that it's fake in advance and that we're watching this. But when they do goofy shit like this, it just fucks up the product. It makes it takes away any kind of seriousness that you can get out of it, you know. And then it was a very shitty looking finish, you know what I mean? It's a non title match. They could have let Pac get a win or whatever, you know. Not like I wanted them to win or whatever there, but they have their fucking goofy guy, Cutler, get involved in the finish. He hits his leg with a belt, I think. Like, hit him in the lower part of his leg, and that was enough to get a one, two, three. Like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? That's one of the problems with the indies there. You get a fucking whole bunch of head bumps, all kind of fucking flip. And then it ends like this, a belt shot to the leg, one, two, three. Is this really like a good finish to a match or whatever? Is the Costanza, WJ, my spirit animal, their Afro Thunder, right back forever there. Voiktor, Baxter, WJ is live, people. They're just a horrible fucking finish. like. Terrible, low-budget wrestling there. And this is probably the best match kind of deal, and it's trash. Like, it's embarrassing. And then you had Tony Schiavone. He's interviewing Mark Henry. 
our new fucking correspondent on Rampage. Are you going to fucking wrestle again? I'm not saying I'll wrestle, but I have a lot left in the tank or whatever. And then Vicky Guerrero comes out screaming or whatever. And then she announces Andrade there, Andrade El Idolo or whatever. Andrade El Jobber, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe that'll make a better title there. Andrade El Jobber comes out there. And uh, apparently, you know, he says he's the face of Latino wrestling. I'm not uh, able to imitate him anymore there because apparently if you imitate, you know, it's called racism now there. But um Fuck it, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck it there. I am face of Latino. Now I am face of A.W. And the crowd was dead. Zero reaction. Zero reaction at all for Andrade. According to fucking Jim Ross there, this man is a threat. To any championship, he has the potential to be the face of the company. The crowd was dead, folks. Zero reaction. You read the clips on Twitter, though, there. It's like fucking Jesus Christ enters the arena. You you fucking read the comments on AEW's clip. Thank you, Tony. For bringing La Sombra in all caps there. You know, this is what it is with indie fans. It's not that Andrade is really a star. It's that they know him as La Sombra. That's what it is there. You know what I mean? I know him from AAA or wherever the fuck. La Sombra. It's like. The man had zero reaction. Where's the star power? This man is bland and boring as fuck. Super fucking bland. It is what it is. According to the comments, he's the next Eddie Guerrero. You fucking serious there? Eddie Guerrero oozed fucking charisma. He was great in the ring, a great talker. This guy can barely talk, you know what I mean? And he has no charisma. Okay, he fucking looked like Rusev for some reason. Like, you know, th- this is why, you know, WWE, they they have control of the appearance of the wrestlers because you don't want Andrade to come out. I don't know if it's the way he shaved his face or his beard or what the fuck happened here, but he looks exactly like Rusev. Like, this is why McMahon controls the hair color and the beards. It's not because he's a big tyrant. It's because you don't want two guys on the same show looking like fucking twins. You know what I mean? Like, but... Zero reaction, fucking zero, a big joke. But if you read the comments, it's fuck. It's like Elvis Presley and the Beatles came fucking back there and they're performing there. Every fucking popular person merged together. Read the comments on the clip and then look at the reality, which is zero reaction which is the real reaction that Andrade would get in WWE. Nobody gave a fuck because he's forgettable, bland, boring. Who cares if he can wrestle? Like, he never really showed me anything so marvelous in the ring. But, like, nowadays they can all wrestle. You need more. You need more than this. You know what I mean? Like, a complete fail. A complete fail. No music, you know, like not even fucking like they they can't have a a music ready for this guy, a song of some sort ready for him when he comes out. Right. It's Vicky Guerrero because she was with Eddie and he's apparently the face of Latino. 
Like, fuck, he's boring. Who, who says he's the face of Latino? It's full of good Latino wrestler. Why would it be this bland, boring fuck that's the face of Latino? You know what I mean? So because he's Spanish or Mexican, they put him with Vicky. And he's supposed to be the next Eddie. Get the fuck out of here. Like, Eddie was a star, a real star. It's not five six retard niche fan la sombra that's like that's not it with eddie eddie was real wrestler a real star with real talent this guy it's a fucking boring bum it is what it is he might not be a bum it's possible he's a he's a, a good wrestler but in terms of charisma he's a fucking bum i mean you know give me a break zero star power like and the, the fuck, the comments, it's so outrageous, so delusional. Oh, now this is the best roster and WWE's the minor league. Really there? Who's the mental case who wrote this? You know what I mean? Reading these comments yesterday, I felt like throwing up. You know what I mean? So fucking completely delusional and out of touch with reality. <laughs> Vicky, oh, give him uh, an applaud. They're begging for people to cheer for him. He's just there with his suit. Nobody gives a fuck. Like, fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, second match Cody and Lee Johnson versus QT and Anthony Go Go. Just a fucking boring match there. A couple of things looked out of sync or whatever. I sense La Sombra. Well, that's what it is. That's that's all the comments. Is. It's like weird indie references there that they think they're hot shit because they reference stuff from the indies that nobody knows. Oh, my God. You're so cool, man. Yeah. It's like, fuck off. Like. It's so fucking retarded. You know what I mean? Like, so QT and the go go, they defeat Cody and Lee Johnson. Okay, this match, it looked out of sync a couple times there. And uh, Cody goes to give his finisher to QT Marshall, a go go with a boring punch. One, two, three. You know what I mean? Like, enough with this shit. Fucking punch, finish, garbage. Who cares? Nobody fucking knows this guy. If it was Mike Tyson wrestling, he punches someone. That's okay. A one, two, three. Who the fuck cares about this boring goof? A go, go, a go goof or whatever with zero charisma or talent with a cheap punch finish again. Like, like, I don't mind that Cody lost or whatever. I'm happy he fucking loses a match. But the excuse is that they were making to justify him losing. You can tell he was going to lose because Jim Ross or Shivani, one of them said that Cody was overtraining, like, for his match with a go-go, like, in the world of the workout people there, when you're overtraining, it's like a bad thing and it, it fucks you up physically or whatever. So basically, they were saying that Cody was overtrained there, you know, basically giving him an excuse. Oh, he, oh, he lost because a man, an illegal man punched him. Just let him lose. Let him fucking lose. He doesn't fucking need, uh, like, a fucking big excuse to lose. Just let him lose. It's embarrassing there. You know what I mean? Where is the Hulkster? Like, who fucking cares? Go ask him, dude. Go on this channel and ask him what the fuck is this. You know what I mean? Go talk to him. He has an account. I haven't seen him in a year and a half. Go talk to him, bro. Nothing stopping you from going on this page, really, you know. And then you have the inner circle, you know what I mean? The inner circle, cutting a promo there. Fucking boring. A boring promo. They say that they're going to fucking, the feud's going to continue. 
it's going to keep going on or whatever. And I'm like, oh, God, why? Why? They've already had two matches. And it's like, it's like they expect people to complain that it's going to continue. And they're trying to prove their point. You know what I mean? It's over when we say it's over. It's like, holy fuck. And Jack Swagger, apparently, is going to have an MMA cage match or whatever fucking next week or in two weeks. That's going to be bad. That's going to be bad. Whenever they try to mix MMA and wrestling, it's always bad. It's always fucking cringy and shitty looking. And that's what's going to happen there. Swagger and Wardlow. In the fucking MMA match. And then Sammy Guevara, he was the hero there for winning the match. You know what I mean? And him, he's talking about backyard wrestling. He used to fucking go on his mother's roof and do the six fucking 30 or whatever. And he fucking, he got to end the pay-per-view doing the 630. You know what I mean? like. How many times do they have to reference backyard wrestling on this show? You know what I mean? Like, I don't get it. Is this a fucking professional wrestling promotion? Or like, who fucking references, you know, backyard wrestling constantly like this and tries to fucking pass themselves off as professional? Like, it's it's cringy there. And Jericho, you know, he's fucking, he wants a a match with MJF, just boring, just bad, you know, right back forever. AEW is a failure. Uh, What's going on here, there? There we go. Go go talk to Altster on this page there with your cheap trolling there. Have a nice day. Fuck you. So, um, and then you have Kenny and Callis backstage. You know what I mean? Kenny and Callis backstage in a fucking, uh, like some kind of production room or whatever. Fuck There we go. That's how you do it, boys. There you go, bud. So it's a production fucking room or whatever. They're in the back. And he's talking about a match coming up with Jungle Boy or whatever. And it's just fucking cheap. Cringy. It doesn't come off as serious. You know what I mean? It's just cheap and lame. Like backstage, some fucking dancing to fucking Jungle Boy song. They're humming the song. It's it's terrible. Perhaps the troll in the chat is the guy who fucking wrote this fucking script. I don't know. You know what I mean? But like, it's fucking terrible, low quality entertainment. Third match, Jungle Boy and Christian defeat Private Party. Um, You know, this was kind of okay, but boring kind of deal. Okay, slash boring, you know. And at one point, like, Jungle Boy, he has one of the guys on the fucking corner, and he fell down kind of like the AJ. He kind of held him like in the AJ Styles finisher position drops down fucking head right on the ground you know and the announcers are like oh you know what i mean it looked like he could have broke his neck it's one of these days man one of these wrestlers are gonna fucking kill themselves on the show you know what i mean it's um so afterwards, Matt Hardy hits fucking Christian with a, his finish or whatever there. 
So I guess we're getting Christian versus 50-year-old Matt Hardy or whatever. Modern wrestling, they're the future, folks. And then we had Sting and Darby Allin. Sting comes out. You know, thank you. It's This was one of the biggest nights of my career there at the pay-per-view or whatever. He had a match with a, a, a jobber partner going up against two jobbers. One of the biggest nights of his career, whatever there. And um, Sky and Ethan Page show up. You know, Darby, you're just Sting's codependent bitch. Find a different partner, somebody besides Sting or whatever, and that's it. That's the skit. Fucking cheap, you know what I mean? Darby's just there with his face paint. <laughs> like, just cheap. <laughs> really cheap. And speaking of cheap, man. Britt Baker celebration for winning the women's title. You know what I mean? It's um, it's her in the ring. There's a bunch of burgers. There's a bunch of random jobbers in the back there. It's Tony Schiavone. There's the big goof looter and a bunch of jobbers. You know what I mean? Um. And basically, Britt, usually Baker cuts a good promo. This was cheap. Her promo was boring, I thought, here. And then the three of them grab a burger. Baker, her, her friend, and Tony Schiavone, they each have a burger. And then Nyla Rose knocks the burger out of their hand. Throws the burgers on the ground, starts awkwardly popping balloons, just walks away, and that's how the segment finishes. So terrible. So terrible and low quality. You know what I mean? This The whole thing lasted maybe two, three minutes. Like, if that. And it was horrible. Like, you would figure, you know, they would do something better for her there, but... It was bad. You know, I don't blame her for this because it's horrible writing and there's no way to fucking make this work there. The goof, a cheap segment, a fucking right, man. Charles Lee Ray, Britt Baker has a nice body, he says there. Kevin Boza, Sting's whole career is being buried. Uh, two, two bad segments back to back. And then in the fourth match, Red Velvet defeats the Bunny in a short throwaway fucking jobber match. They're just cheap. And apparently the Bunny has a new gimmick. Now she's crazy there. That's never been done there. She's crazy or whatever, and she's fucking screaming, a lot of screaming and looking at the camera like this. <laughs> Apparently, that's their new character. She's crazy. And yeah. And in the main event, folks, it's Dustin Rhodes versus Nick Camarado, ladies and gentlemen. They're Nick Camarado, a guy that just started. Uh, he's not good, really. He's like a part of QT Marshall and the Go Go's group. I guess because Cody and QT have a feud, that means Cody's brother and the random jobber freak should be in the main event. Is that it there? Because he's <laughs> the brother of Cody Rhodes. He's 60 years old, Dustin Rhodes, for fuck's sake. Why is he in the main event? It's a 60-year-old Dustin Rhodes. Against a complete fucking not credible jobber guy that's not established. And that's the main event. And it was a bull rope match. Just very random. A complete random main event. It was boring. You know what I mean? And then Dustin Rhodes wins now. 
Correct me if I'm wrong there, folks, but isn't Dustin Rhodes old there? Isn't he old there? Shouldn't he be putting over the young talent? Isn't that usually what happens in wrestling there? If the, the way they're trying to present this Camarado guy, first of all, the name sucks. He's boring, like he's terrible, like. You know, it's possible down the road he becomes better. I don't know, but he's not ready for the main event yet. Nobody fucking knows this guy. What's he fucking doing in the main event, first of all? But if they're going to put a young guy like this, that's fucking huge like this, going up against a 60-year-old man, can't the fucking old man let the young guy win, like... What are they thinking here? Is there like a bright future for Gold Dust? Is it a, a bright future? Is Gold Dust the next in line to become world champ? Shouldn't they let a young guy win against a veteran? Isn't that why they have veterans there? Why is Dustin Rhodes winning? Like, but overall, there, this was fucking pathetic. Fucking bad. Everything was bad. Every match was cheap. Every segment was atrocious. Like Christian and Jungle Boy, it's okay apart from almost killing one of the guys there. Every other match was weird or boring. The young bucks were fucking weird. Andrade's fucking his debut was a complete fail. Zero reaction. And and speaking of reaction, nobody was getting a reaction because the show was boring. Like, I'm reading the comments, oh, fuck this crowd, fuck him from the fans. Like, if this was so fucking mark out worthy, people should have been cheering, fuck this crowd. No, it's a terrible show. It's a horrible show, and fucking who knows what these fans were fucking subdued to before the, the fucking show officially started. Maybe they they had to sit through 15 matches of dark before this shit started, you know? It's not the fans' fault. This fucking show was bad. Like, it's horrible. And when Dustin Rhodes wins, he gets no reaction because who cares about Nick Camarato and main event? Fuck off, you know what I mean? And Dustin was so fucking desperate to get cheers. He's like, come on, come on. Nobody cheers. He fucking gets up, goes in the crowd and everything. Come on. And you can tell that he was desperate for cheers. You could just see it that he fucking just on the spot decided to go through the crowd to try to get a big reaction And he goes in the crowd, nobody, like he had a mild, very mild, yeah, just out of generosity. He's standing next to a group of people. He's like, come on, come on. And even the people next to him were barely reacting. They were standing. Dustin Road was right next to these people. Right next to them, you would figure, right, that people would be like, oh, my God, he's right next to me. He's such a big deal. Oh, fuck. What a big fucking moment this is to be standing next to Dustin Road. He's standing next to the people. There was some dudes like, yeah. like that. That's the reaction that he gets, you know. Embarrassing embarrassing show you know what i mean everything from the inner circles cringy promo jericho trying too hard to to sound badass or something this was bad el tornado loco cody probably still thinks this is awesome Uh, right back forever dustin rhodes is a washed up never was well you know he was okay as a mid carter, but he's definitely like fucking past his fucking prime. You know what I mean? Um, zero ten. What number you give this show? It can't be more than like fucking two and a half. It just can't. It can't. Like, 
I don't know, like 10 match slash segments. And everything was terrible. Like, <clears throat> you know, if, if Sting tanking the fans for 10 seconds <laughs> counts as something, it like... Everything was bad, 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 bad. Every single fucking thing. Kenny and Callis backstage was horrible. Everything was terrible. I don't fucking get it, but how this shit is on TV, I don't understand. It's embarrassing. Meltzer saying the early numbers are good. We're going to see what it is there. I expect, you know what I mean, that... um these fans are going to make sure to tune in. They probably made sure to tune in just because of the horrible numbers. So they're probably going to be better. But, you know, if they get fucking a lot of viewers for this, it's just more people being turned off. It would have benefited them more if nobody watched this because then they would nobody would see how terrible it is and how embarrassing it was. Nobody reacting for them at all. You know what I mean? So so that's about it there, folks. Um, little late night video there. Piccolo, c'est la vie, WJ, c'est la vie. Yes. Fucking terrible, man. So that's about it, folks, for tonight there. Until next time. Peace. Ah.